Audio Sound. This is Bjorn Jacobson speaking, and this is a video series about how to do AAA sized projects in WISE. Okay, welcome back to another Kujo Sound series here on how to make a AAA game WISE project. Um, just a quick disclaimer before we get started, as always, we're trying to create a AAA WISE project from scratch without having a game to attach it to. The reason why we're doing so is that we want to simulate that we are prepared for when the project is ready for us. Normally, of course, you would have something that you could hook up, like let's say if you can hook up ambience, but maybe you cannot hook up footsteps, but that shouldn't prevent you from creating all your sounds and your wise setup. So let's get cracking. And in this video, we'll be talking about the importance of setting up switch containers and other things that we will be needing for our project. Now we have already created a couple of switch containers over here, like just the generic ones that I mentioned in the previous video. If you haven't watched those, maybe you should do so because this is like a series of things about how to do things on. Of course, you can check the specific video that you need, but that's about it. Let's say here, player, player speed, we need that to be associated to the player speed RTPC that we created. So what you're going to do is that you're going to create every switch that you can imagine that you're going to need. So let's create, use game, game parameter up here, and down here you choose what game parameter you want. We created player speed, we just created it between 0 and 5, could be anything, but set the values that you need. But that also means that we know that if we're, let's say, between, let's create these points here, we are between four and five, we'll be sprinting. If we are between three and four, we'll be running. Oop. Three and four, we will be running. There you go. And here between, let's say two and three, maybe that should actually be if we are 1.5. And there we'll be walking. And then just one thing that's quite common to miss is that this one down here points to none. It should not point to none, of course. Another common mistake is that this node up here in the corner is quite often down here, which leads to the fact that if you can run faster or sprint faster than five, your value will actually be none. And that actually ca that costs quite a lot of confusion because you will realize your value is what it needs to be, but it cuts you off because the numbers are interpreted in the wrong way. So just make sure that happens. Now we've set up this one switch it's a great way of getting started because now we can use this switch for whatever we need whenever we're going to be creating our footstep hierarchy later. But when it comes to our footstep hierarchy, we know, let's just imagine that we know that some programmer, some game designer, game developer, level designer, etc., environment artist has told us that they will, for a fact, know the value of ground wetness. We created an RTPC called ground wetness before, so let's go ahead and create a switch group which we're going to be calling ground wetness switch. And we can just simply call it, we can have dry, we can have semi wet. Well, actually that should just be moist or damp. Damp would be more appropriate. Um, damp and we can have wet and soaked, right? So if we go to our switch over here and click again, use game parameter in down here, click which one we want. We want ground wetness. Now, notice how they come in this order. That is the order that we created the values over here at the switch. If you create them in any other order than you need them, they will not be listed alphabetically or in any way like that. They will be you. They will be. They will be here in the order that you created them. So if you want them to be like with the footsteps, sneak, walk, run, and sprint, create them in that order. Because if you create them just randomly, let's say sprint, walk, sneak, and then run, they will appear and they will appear in that order, which means that you will have an RTPC value in here that will end up looking something like this maybe. And that's stupid. You want this to be orderly and in orderly fashion so that it looks nice whenever you're working. So let's get rid of these again here. And let's say whenever the ground is dry, the ground should be dry for probably the majority of what's going on here. So let's say between zero and one, let's just say 0.1. And from there, we'll call the ground damp. And it should actually be damp for quite a while. And it'll be wet from 0.4 to five, from 0.4 to 0.8, 
And this one up here goes, there you go. That was a brilliant example of this snow down here being down here, actually. So if the ground can become more wet than one, which it probably can't, but if it can, for some reason, you'd be home free if you do it that way. This means that we now have an RTPC that comes in. Who knows when that will be sent, but this RTPC will be able to control a switch container already just by setting this up. The reason why we're setting this up is because we, for I don't know whatever reason, I because I planned this, but I know. But let's say you can think of, oh, actually we can switch between the different sounds of the footstep already, which means that we can actually create a hierarchy already where we can test out our footsteps even before the ground wetness RTPC is actually working. You can also use your RTPCs for blend containers. Blend containers are created over in your hierarchy. So let's under let's just use the default folder, even though we're not going to use it. But if you use a blend container, down here, if we're going to be using the same form of footsteps, let's say we have footsteps, a switch container called footsteps that would be playing our generic footsteps. Then under it, we can, let's say a random container, let's say if we would just want it to be the ground wetness, then we could have dry, damp, wet, vert, wet, and soaked. In your blend container, you can say that you want a blend track. Now, a blend track works like this, that you add a blend track like this, and you can we can call this here wetness and crossfade or whatever you need. Now, in here, let's say that we want under wetness, we want dry, we want dry, damp, wet, and soaked. And again, under footsteps, we will be clicking edit the blend track. And right now you can't see anything, but let's say if we crossfade here and say that we want this to be ground wetness, you will see that you will get a nice value here where it will then check specifically ground wetness. What is ground wetness when this one here triggers? This means that you only need, just as with the switch event, need one event to trigger an entire container. The problem with this type of blend container is that it plays all four versions using four voices. Now, you can have your settings to tell it that this can go to virtual voice. A so-called virtual voice is a voice of something that it knows is playing, but doesn't use a voice really. But this also clocks up your profiler, and I would prefer not to. I would prefer to keep my project really clean, so if I know that there isn't something that is going to crossfade, like if I don't need it to crossfade in a specific manner like this, I would never use the switch container. I would never use the blend container in this fashion. But now you know, it is possible to do so with both switch containers and blend containers for doing so. One thing that I would really like Audio Kinetic to do, uh, I'm sure they have a 500 page document, probably even more, with suggestions from both me, the community, from you, from the Wise Discord channel, which happens to be my own, and the Wise um, Facebook page and so on. They have thousands of suggestions for the game. They will eventually probably get to yours. There's no guarantee that it will ever go in. I'm sure they're listening, but they have so much work and they're only such many people to work on the project. So I'm sure it'll come one day, but I would really like the possibility to have an RTPC that can feed another RTPC instead of having in code or in my engine feed two values to two different RTPCs or the same value to two RTPCs. Because in this case, let's say ground wetness, maybe we needed to respond extremely fast to whatever value we're in, in case we're using the blend track that we just showed. But what if we need it to respond slower? What if we want it to like crossfade slowly or something? We can do that with switch containers as well. That means that under our game sinks, under our RTPCs, let's say ground wetness, as you can see, it simply comes in with a value between zero and one, and that's about it. But what if I want a ground wetness that is interpolated with a slew rate or filter over time um, so that we can make it go a little slower, like kind of like, like a drunk parameter that moves kind of slowly. So if it's suddenly super wet, it just slowly moves to wet and back and forth so that we don't suddenly have a giant splash when it just started raining and maybe the game thinks that the ground is wet. 
this would be really smart if we could have a ground wetness, uh, let's call it slow here, a ground wetness slow down here. The reason for that would be that maybe we could then have one version that goes extremely fast depending on when the value changes and then one slow one that'll say slew rate and it'll probably be like 0.5 and 0.5. So if the value goes from zero to one, instantly it'll take you two seconds before you're at one actually that's just a suggestion for audio kinetic use it if you want that's just um something that would be really useful instead of having in a blueprint in unreal or in code in unity or whatever engine you're using it would be really smart if i could just say that this rtpc inherits the value of another rtpc but i know for a fact that for the case that we are going to explore later with our footsteps we want it to be slow we want it to as I said before, not be instant if it suddenly becomes ground wetness one. And you may ask, what if we have puddles on the ground and we want it to look like a puddle that we're stepping in just because suddenly the ground is full wetness? Well, we might have a material called water puddle instead for that, which would be a much smarter way of dealing with this. So that our ground wetness value is simply only to slowly mix between if something sounds soggy if you're in a forest or if it's a dry forest. So even if you have an RTPC, let's say like the fly count, which now right now comes in and isn't used, why not already create the switch that you know can then feed off this value? You might not need it, you might not use it, but just so that it's ready, so that you know that fly count is coming in as a value, but it's also already set up as a switch so that you can switch between things. It's a really smart way because in the long run, you will have all these things ready. The same goes for this switch that we're going to create now, which is called rain type switch. So we're going to be using the game parameter that we mentioned before. Again, because we made one that was called rain amount, we know that it will be raining between zero and one. And right now the switch doesn't have any switch values inside it. So let's call it sunny. We have sunny day with no rain. Make a switch that we will call light rain. Medium rain, full rain, and stormy. So once again, we'll set this up here to be, this could actually be none because we might not need the type of rain, but let's say sunny is the minimum value that we're going to be needing. So like this. Sometimes I just drag and drop these out so that I can easily move them later. And here again is a brilliant example of the node being down here, which would mean that if our rain amount would suddenly be one, it would trigger the switch called none, which we don't want at all. So let's put that up there. Let's say that between 0.9, it'll be stormy, but everything up here from 0.65 will be full rain. And then medium rain and light rain, that should just be like, you know, soft touches of rain, dust in your face. Uh, medium rain will probably be where it's actually raining, but the light rain should just be like in your face. So let's take this one, 0.35. This one here starts at 0.1 because this value won't be above zero if it's not raining. We know that because we talked to our environment artist or some VFX guy who says there will be rain visible in the visuals as soon as this value goes above zero. So at 0 0.1, we want light rain. Maybe you need to tweak these values, but it's a very, very good start so that you know that we can, just as with the footsteps that I mentioned before, we can now create an entire hierarchy of a rain environment that'll be working just with one event with a bunch of sounds that we put in there and it'll be able to crossfade with this. And that's before we even have an environment to put it into. Thank you for watching this Kujo Sound video on how to do AAA size projects and whys. If you like this video, why not hit the thumbs up or maybe even subscribe to the channel. If you want to support the channel and all the time that I take off to create all this content, consider heading over to patreon.com forward slash Kujo Sound, where you for as little as $1 a month can help me sustain this channel. I would really, really appreciate it. Hopefully I'll see you again in another video or check out some of the other videos on the channel. It's a lot of game audio stuff. Once again, thanks for watching. See you next time.